people! <laughs> it is Geeks and Gus, season three, episode three, Ghost to Coast, with me, your host, Mikey Shiraz, Fred Dust approved. And tonight we welcome our very special guest. She is the vocalist of Chase Long Beach from Long Beach, California. She is motherfucking Karen Roberts. <laughs> Hi. Hi, it's so good to see you. Thank you for having me. It's been a while. A long time. It's been too long. Far, it's far over here. Far too long. How's the weather there? It actually feels like fall. It's a little, um, a little chilly. It's getting a little chilly. A little I'm chilly. sure not as cold as you guys, but oh, it's fucking freezing here. Yeah, yeah. I like, I've, take, I've taken, I've taken my jacket off, but. I am frozen solid. Like it's just, it's just pissed it down forever, and like uh, it's just, it's just a sad time to be alive. <laughs> it's so cold. I mean, isn't that the majority okay. of time in England? Sorry, isn't that the majority of time in England? Oh man, that I, I could hardly hear you then because I don't know why. Uh, isn't that the majority of time in England? <laughs> Well, yeah, we are just the greatest country in the world. <laughs> Do you miss England at all? Oh, yeah. I want to come back to Huddersfield so bad. Well, you got to come back over, dude. you got to come back over. I know. It's in my agenda. Good, good. Well, how it is, Karen, you are the, the third guest of season three. It's good to see your, your head because it's been a little while. And what we're going to do today is we're going to talk about your life in music. We're going to talk about your life now as a superstar actor. <laughs> and then we're going to talk about ghosts. Yes, let's do it. Let, let's do it. So Karen, from Long Beach, California, from the band Chase Long Beach, how did you get your start in the world of music? Um, well, technically... I started in my very first band playing bass, and I was so bad at playing Blink-182 covers on bass that they kicked me out, uh, which is really sad. You must be really bad at bass if you can't do that. Um, and then the next day, I was like, I don't know, maybe I can sing. And then I started Chase Long Beach. And then now it's been 21 years. <laughs> it has. And you are a fucking good singer. you know. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. It, it took it took a while. There was uh, some trial and error. I figured it out. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> but like, um, so how old were you when you started Chess Long Beach? I was thirteen. Thirteen? Holy yeah, shit! I know. I know. So you've been doing that band now for forty years. <laughs> My... Forty-five. Yeah. 45. Sorry, I, I get the maths all wrong. That's all right. That... Yeah. So 13 years old. Now, how did one go about getting gigs as a 13-year-old? Oh, I, I, you didn't know this? I'm notorious for sucking it for shows. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> of course. I mean, I've booked you. Of course I know this. <laughs> uh, no, no. Uh, you know, I don't know. I, you just kind of, we played, like, a lot of, like, the local youth centers, and we did, like, you know, a lot of the shitty, like, pay-to-play gigs where you have to, like, s sell so many tickets, and if you don't, you have to pay for the tickets, and you just kind of have to weed through the bullshit for a few years before you start getting offered real real gigs, you know? Yeah, yeah. But uh, you, you're a band, like, um, you've always been part of the ska scene and everything like that. I mean, uh, we were, were you a band who was, like, accepted pretty much straight away, or did you have to proper put in the work? accepted pretty much straight away especially because we started the band in a time when ska had just become really unpopular so there weren't as many <laughs> yeah we picked the perfect time to start um in, in 2002 we were like yeah you know what's really cool right now ska <laughs> um and so you know I, we didn't have an awful lot of competition or people wanting to come to the show so nobody was going to stop us i guess <laughs> but you know you, you're from California, and that is just mm. the state of scar, really. Yeah. You know, yeah. the sun's always shining. I remember the first time I ever went over when I met you 
for the first time, and it was to see Fandango recording. And and I remember it was January that I went out, and I yep. brought all my winter clothes because I'm from Huddersfield, and I got off the plane, and I was like, what the fuck is this? <laughs> it's, like, it's like a Huddersfield summer. I remember you being in shorts the entire time. Well, yes. Yeah. I remember I remember um, one day they were recording and I didn't have anything to do. So I was like, I'm going to walk up to Disneyland. And they were all like, you're going to walk? I was like, it's like a mile. And they were just shocked because nobody walks. And I made friends with a tramp on a bus. It was great fun. Wait, did you actually go to Disneyland? Because it is not a mile from where they recorded. Well, it, it was a bus ride. Okay. Was a, I, I was like, that's like... 10 miles from where they recorded. But, you know, I, I had nothing else to do. It was a good, it was a good time. And yeah, I can When did I first meet you? Was it at the slide bar? Yes, and I, I, I was just thinking about this a couple of days ago. I remember you jumped into me and spilled... I had just gotten a drink, and my drink spilled all down me. And, and you felt so bad you bought me another drink, but I also felt so bad because I remember you kind of being like, well, shit. Like, I don't have the money to be buying her a drink, but I have to now. Yeah. <laughs> and I was just like, yeah, yeah, you should do that. And I'm like underage, drinking, getting into the bar legally, whatever. Yeah. Is, is that place still open? No. Somebody, they sold it in the pandemic. The lit guys moved to Nashville. Yeah. And they sold the bar. And then whoever bought it, they still haven't done anything with it, but they're not turning it into a live music venue. It's super sad. We all miss it. That is a fucking pity. But anyway, we're going, I'm going off the beaten track here. I'm just, yeah. I'm just doing like, like, hey, remember when we met? We had a good time. <laughs> we haven't caught, you know, we haven't been able to catch up in a long time, so I get it. Everybody gets to be part of this conversation. Yeah, 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 yeah. If you're listening at home, we're just friends talking now. Mm-hmm. Why are you listening? <laughs> But um, do you remember your, like, first bunch of shows? Were you good? Because we should realize we were fucking terrible. Oh, my God. No, we were fucking awful. Jesus Christ. Uh, and we didn't even have horn section. I want to think, like, a full horn section probably until, like, a year and a half mm-hmm. into being a band. So, like, our first few shows, we were just a four-piece. It was just me, bassist, guitarist, and drummer. And, uh, no, we were... That's how important they were. They don't even have names. <laughs> <laughs> yep. Well, none of them are in the band anymore. So, like, why give them names? I don't. Oh, them. <laughs> <laughs> so, how long did it take to get like the full horn section and everything? So, our first rendition of the full horn section, yeah, was probably about like a year and a half into the band, and then you know, of course, I think we got rid of everyone except for Tristan. So, Tristan is our oldest horn player that's still in the band, mm-hmm. and then Megan came along. Um, she was brought in by another horn player who was not in the band anymore. And then Drew came along, I want to say, two and a half, three years into the band. So, yeah, I mean, it took a while before we had the horn section that we do now. I want to say, like, at least three years, probably. Yeah. And then you never looked back, apart from when you sucked for quite a few years. Oh, yeah. We started, you know, I mean, we still sucked a little bit, but at least we had horns, you know. We were figuring it out at that point. Yeah. So from back then, you still got Tristan, you still got Megan. Mm-hmm. Is everyone else changed? Um, yeah. You know, actually, it's funny. Our drummer, he was in the band, I want to say, <clears throat> probably about two years into starting the band and then we had to kick him out because he had to keep missing practices so he was in the band for like two years we kicked him out then he came back a few years later after Emilio you knew Emilio I do know Emilio handsome man handsome man he's doing really well he's a music teacher um as if he's a teacher because you know he he was like he's what you call a ladies man he'd go to like he'd go to a girl and just be like all the confidence in the world when you yep. want yep. me. <laughs> <laughs> um, but after we, we kicked Emilio out, uh, we brought Rod back in. So he's been in the band ever since. And then Joe has been in the band, oh my gosh, I think since 2007. So it's been a really long time. I mean, well, obviously, you know, 
we disbanded for a good portion of those years. We weren't together for like probably around 10 years of us yeah. or 21 years together. So we're all still the same that we were in 2010. Sweet, sweet, sweet. Yeah. How, yeah. Many, how many members do you think you've had in the band so far? I was doing this with Shiraz the other trying to work out all the different people who've been in the band. You know, like how on Wikipedia it says, like, which band, band members you've had and how long and shit. Yep, yep. And I think- um, yep, actually, we did this once, but we had more band members afterwards, but I still have it somewhere. We went through, like, it was like a tree where it was like the members that were still in the band were leaves on the tree, and then the members that were recently kicked out were falling leaves, and then the members that had been out of the band for a while were, you know, dead leaves on the floor. <laughs> And I think it's somewhere around, we figured out it was somewhere around like 30 members. <laughs> Holy fuck, that's more than us. <laughs> yeah, that's a lot. good. A lot. Yeah. <laughs> we can't remember with a scar band, there is like 54 members at any one time. Yeah, yeah, I mean, at least. And yeah. then you've got the roadies. Yeah, <laughs> the freeloaders. Yeah. <laughs> so uh, when did you realize that, uh, let's say, Cheers on Beach started? Getting a name, let's say, on the scene. Oh, God. <clears throat> I don't think anyone's ever asked me that question. Um, have we? I-, I don't know. Yeah, 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 of course. I mean, <laughs> you know, you've, you've, never, uh, you've never done what I call, you know, shit gigs. You've always been out with like people like Mad Caddy's Real Big Face, yeah. you know, all the yeah, names. We've gotten really, yeah, we've gotten really lucky. Um, I want to say probably when I was like around... 16 or 17, we played our first show uh, with a bigger band, which was Suburban Legends, was the first time. Brian Clems could be on here soon. Oh, I love Brian. He's yeah, what a wonderful... He oh, is. Yeah, he is. He actually, I was at one of their shows recently, and he saved me from the security guard trying to kick me out, so it's his heart. Um, Why were you going to kick me out? Well, because I came in and I was already out and I lied and I said I had to go to the bathroom and then and then Brian was like, no, she's got to like, let her in. She's got to go to the bathroom. And I didn't have to. I just stood in the bathroom for a couple of minutes. <laughs> 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 alone. Um, but yeah, I think I think I was like 16 when we played the Suburban Legends for the first time at the old knitting factory. Mm-hmm. And uh, I think that was really kind of when things started to take off for us. Uh, and then we kept getting more gigs like that. We became really good friends with Starpool when they had reunited. And we would do a lot of things back and forth with them where we would do like co-headlining shows. We'd play with Suburban Legends more. And then we had the whole thing happen with Real Big Fish. Uh, I think probably what, like 2000, 2006, 2007. Um, mm-hmm. Because I, this is so random. I was at a Real Big Fish show. And I was close enough to the front of the stage and they decided they were going to pull somebody out of the audience to sing. She has a girlfriend now with Aaron and uh, they picked me randomly and I got pulled out of the audience and then I got up there and then Aaron wanted to meet me after the show. And, uh, and then, it <laughs> you know, um, <laughs> Uh, and then he ended up producing our first full length album. He uh, he wanted to produce our album. He came to us, and um, we were the first band other than his own that he mm-hmm. produced. So yeah, he produced Lebec, and then uh, then we toured with them, and it just kept going. And then we got signed to Victory Records and put out the second you know, the best record label in the world. Uh, put a- <laughs> oh, I want to go into this in a bit, to be honest. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, well, can, we can go into it whenever you want. But yeah, I think it was probably around 16, 17 that it started to take off. So yeah, probably like 2000, 2005, I want to say yeah. things started to turn around for the band. Yeah, I think it was uh, 2006 where you came over to uh, the UK with, was it, I think it was with Monica, and we all went to Slam Dunk yeah. Festival. And yeah. Uh, yeah, you met with Real Big Fish there and stuff yeah, like that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And yeah. Fonz was really pissed and started uh, trying to chat up. Haley Williams from Parabar really struck and she just looked petrified. I'm I could say so many things about that woman, but I'm gonna keep my mouth shut. Tell them all. <laughs> oh, I just remember that day specifically. She was just such a nasty bitch to me. 
and like, I mean, she was, I'm not gonna lie. And this was before Paramore was even really taken off. They were opening for Real Big Fish at yeah, Slam yeah. Dunk Festival. So like, and it wasn't like I was like some fan girl. Like we were all backstage. We had all access passes. Aaron from Real Big Fish introduced me to her. And what had happened too was that I was working for the agency group at the time, which I was working on a deal for Paramore specifically and Adidas. Uh, they were doing some Adidas commercial. And, uh, and for, I, sorry for those in the UK, that's Adidas. Is that really how you say it? Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> you guys, you guys are weird. <laughs> <laughs> but sorry, carry on. Uh, no, no, you're good. Uh, yeah, she was just like super fucking rude to me, and I, I, I was like, it was like I it was some like weird, inappropriate thing. It was like, hey, I work for your band. Hey, I was just introduced by the head by me band to you, and she was so rude. And I was like, okay, never mind. First impression. <laughs> but now we're a paramour now, though, eh? <laughs> That's what happens. Yeah, karma <laughs> really got them, huh? Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> but end of the day, she's ginger, <laughs> so she can't she can't dream, and she smells a piss. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, next week's guest is Haley from Paramour, by the way. Just so <laughs> where we get the other side of the story. <laughs> <laughs> she's gonna be who? <laughs> um, <laughs> Does it count if you dye your hair ginger? Because like no, 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 that's fine, that's fine. Okay, all right, okay. So I'm I'm still a normal person then. Uh, okay. uh, my facial hair, what little I've got, is ginger. Oh, so do you have soul or? I don't know what's happening to be honest. <laughs> you have soul. Yeah, yeah. I mean, <laughs> when I was years ago, I I grew a mustache for the first time, and I used to get hair dye from the pound shop. And like put it on my mustache and dye it. Then somebody told me I look like an opera singer, so I shaved it off. So, <laughs> but yeah, nah, that's neither <laughs> here nor there. But uh, you did mention uh, you did sign to uh, Victory Records. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Now Victory Records are a big label. They had a lot of big bands, you know. Yeah. But they've also got uh, some controversy surrounding them. Yes. Yeah. Did you? Yeah. Uh, how? did you find them as a label? Oh, they were great. They were so awesome. Um, no, they, they, they stay true to the controversy. They, Tony, you know, and we can talk freely about this. They're not a label anymore. Tony is in charge. Doesn't matter. Um, Tony is notoriously an asshole and he was an asshole. Um, <clears throat> thing is, is we knew that going into it and we knew that the deal wasn't super great, but again, we were a ska band in 2000, in nine when we signed the deal and uh we knew we weren't gonna get a better deal and it was like oh you know take what you can get like we're gonna get distribution we never of course reimbursed them you know all of the money because again we're a ska band <laughs> um but uh you know it was still worth the experience that album sounds amazing we would have never been able to afford that on our own to get that you know type of production value and record at the lasting room in uh, colorado where we did and uh you know we got a lot of worldwide distribution from it and uh a really shitty contract and we don't own our masters and uh <laughs> we had to fight to get our spotify but we finally did it uh you know it was worth it question mark Big time. I mean, I remember being, I think I was in London town and I went to a record shop there and I saw your album and I was very proud. I was very yeah. proud. Yeah. yeah. It, it, it was a good, it was a good thing to see. But then um, you went, you went on, what brought around the hiatus? Was it to do with victory or? No, no. So I had actually quit the band in um, December of 2009. So. But you <laughs> are the band. <laughs> Hair flip. Um, no, I um, it sounds kind of funny because we got signed to Victory in February of 2009. The record came out in June of 2009, and then I quit in December of 2009. Um, so it had nothing to do with Victory at all. Uh, but no, no, I was just I always wanted to pursue acting, and I just woke up on the road, like on the bus one day, and I was I was 21, and I was like, I can't do this the rest of my life. <laughs> <laughs> I was just, you know, 
I was just kind of like ready to move on with my life at the time. It was just taking up too much of my life and I couldn't do both. And I had always known that I wanted to act and I finally got the courage to do it. And, uh, and there was some, you know, inner turmoil happening in the band with a member who was no longer in the band. Which and one? that's why. Well, this is the thing. It's our bassist, but our new bassist is also named Pat. So people go, what happened to Pat? We go, what are you talking about? He's right here. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, so yeah, our, there, there were some issues we were having, uh, with our old bassist. And, uh, then I quit, they got a new singer. She was in the band for like seven months. And then the band just kind of dissolved after they left. And, uh, that went back together without him and we're all super happy. So that's good. Do you ever hear a lot of fun? Uh, nope. And if we did, I respond. Because, you know, uh, when we did the uh, US tour together in 2007, can you believe it was that long ago? I know. I like that. He could be a right douchebag. Yeah. Yeah. It only got it only got better. Did it? <laughs> yeah. Oh, the listeners are getting all the goss today. <laughs> I know. I was like, there's so much more that I probably should not share with the uh, general public that I'll, I'll, I'll send to you in an email after. <laughs> yeah. Wicked, wicked. <laughs> but um, like I said, it was 2007 where we came over to you and we did mm. such a fun tour. Yeah. Of every fucking weird venue yep. in America. <laughs> yep, yep. I will never ever forget what a fun time and what a scary time some of that was. <laughs> I used to like how the fact that hey, you were 21 at a time, so you guys used to sometimes have to sit outside the bars. Yep. But um, yep. I think there was like a part of it where Rob, our drummer at the time, mm-hmm. and Fonts, our guitarist at the time, uh, and Tori d- didn't take any ID with them, and only me and Tim did. So we used to go and sit in bars and have a drink and just look at them outside and wave. It was just <laughs> such a good time. But I'll never forget the night we landed for that tour, and we came to meet you, and we went to a party at Aaron Barrett's from Real Big Fisher's house. Oh, yeah, that's right. I forgot about that. And then that was the night I realized not much money in punk rock. <laughs> Like nothing again, but in my head, it was like, whoa, because Real Big Fish in the UK, so big. They were huge, like, doing yeah. huge. So I was like, we're going to go to this huge mansion on the Hollywood Hills. <laughs> and then we got there, and I was like, there was a portal in the garden. I remember that. <laughs> and then it was like it a townhouse, like, house, yeah. Yeah, yeah, just like a, yeah. it was a normal house. Yeah, yep. Blew my mind. Yeah. And that's somebody who actually makes money doing it. Matt and the rest of us. <laughs> I know, right? <laughs> but yeah, what a fun, what a fun, fun tour. Uh, do you remember, were we in Texas where we played outside and the police came and shut down the gig? Yes, yes. And it was, I think it was the 4th of July. No, no, yeah. no. 4th of July was when we were in Oregon and that person OD'd next to us. And they yes. were really about it. <laughs> that's a... Uh, that's when I was walking down the street and I saw a little dog. I was like, oh, there's a dog. So I went over to stroke it. And when I got to the dog, it was dead. It had no eyes. Oh, no. It'd be, it must have been there a while, you know. And I was like, oh, God, what is this? God, I, I'm so glad I did not see that. I did not know that that even happened. Yeah, oh, and Tori God. was behind us. I was like, don't come any closer. Oh, my God. That is hey, terrifying. Is this a, who's this cat? Uh, this is Meredith. Every time I'm on the computer, she has to come on my lap. It never fails. Yeah. And then she'll it's... also sit on my lap. Oh, bless her. I think you missed bless. that joke, but that's all right. <laughs> <laughs> now, I'm just watching the, the tail going around your neck. Yeah. She's going to keep doing it. And there's no point look... of pushing her off because she'll come back again. It just looks like you've got a big furry dick. <laughs> I do, actually. You want to see it? <laughs> we've all seen it we've all got the internet <laughs> but um, you touched on that uh, when you you stopped you wanted to pursue acting because you wanted to yeah. get a proper career mm. so, <laughs> yeah but, it's also going super well yeah but uh, one of the things I remember you telling me is uh, about your acting teacher now if I'm not mistaken your acting teacher 
is Ted's dad from Bill and Ted. Yeah, one of my acting teachers was he also directed a play that I did. One of the most boring plays I ever did, but he's such a lovely man. Yeah, Hal Landon. Oh, Hal Landon Jr., technically. He is the Bill coolest and Ted. dude. Yeah! No, he is the coolest dude. He's so sweet. Do you have his phone number? I do not have his phone number, unfortunately. I'm sorry. Did you ever kiss him? I, I didn't, but I wanted to. His wife wasn't cool with it, though. Oh, uh, yeah, because he's he took Bill's m- Missy. He started going out with yeah. Missy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. In Bill and Ted 3. God damn. Yeah, I know. Crazy. Crazy. But how, how's the acting been going? Because I saw... Um, are you doing, like, a sitcom? That you've done a treat? Yeah, so I've actually, um, that's actually something I've written. Um, I wrote a sitcom pilot, and uh, I've written the pitch for it, too. So I'm in the process of trying to sell it uh, mm-hmm. currently. Which, of course, I've written a role for myself in it. Good. And uh, it's actually, it's a, a mockumentary sitcom about a ska band. You know, write what you know. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I think so. <laughs> Do you yeah, play really the speaker of a ska it. band? No, actually, um, the person that I'm supposed to, that I've written for myself is the manager who's like, she used to be the singer of a ska band, and now she's managing, it's her brother's uh, ska band, and she's just like washed up alcoholic. So, you know, it made sense. Right, what you know. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah, I was thinking, uh, just going off acting, back to that sort of, I've just remembered. What was that drinking game that you showed us? Oh, that where we put the, the forties in your hands? Is that one? No, no, the, yeah, there was, there was a jug, I think, and is it like was it called Kings or something? Oh, Kings Cup, where you have a cup in the middle, and then there's cards all around it in a circle. Yeah, yes. yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, that's a really popular game. That's not a good game to play if everyone's already really drunk, though, because nobody ever pays attention after a certain point. So, yeah, so it's King's Cup. God, I haven't played that in a really long time. Um, yeah, and you put, like, a, a cup in the middle, and then you put a deck of cards all around the edge, face down, and uh, everybody has to pull cards, and each card means something different. And the thing where it gets really confusing is that Everyone has different fucking rules for different cards. So it's like house rules, you know, depending on where you're playing, people will pick whatever this card means. And um, eventually, if you pick the king, obviously there's only four kings in a deck. The first three people who pick a king have to pour stuff of whatever it is that they're drinking in that cup in the middle. And then the last person to pull the king, that's when the game ends. They also have to drink the concoction that's in the middle of that cup. So it's like... You know, you have somebody drinking beer and somebody drinking, like, a white Russian or, you know, whatever. And then it all, ugh. oh, God, just thinking about that. Yeah, I yeah. remember when we all played it together, I ended up with no trousers on, which happens. Yeah, uh, yeah. It's like, I don't think that was actually a rule. That was just you, you know, wanting to take your pants off. But, you, know, you know, it was a time of tight pants, you know, I need to, yeah. I need to be free. I, I get it. I totally get it. I'm yeah. wearing pants right now, you know, so... <laughs> Ah, good work. <laughs> what time is it where you are? Uh, it is 11.30 a.m. Oh my God. I've had I a know. whole day. I know. I'm like, you're over here drinking. I'm over here having coffee still. I wish yeah. I could drink. I got to go to work later. Wait, where are you working? Oh, I'm working on Oktoberfest currently. Ah, shit. I saw some pictures of you. Yeah, your little I'm a shot. yeah <laughs> yep, yep. I'm a shot girl, so I'm just going and getting people drunk. So acting's going well? <laughs> yeah, <it's> super good. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, didn't, did it, <laughs> I'm sorry. Uh, you did a, did you, you do a few adverts and shit lately? Like, like. I did, yeah. I just had a commercial come out, I want to say about a month ago or a few weeks ago, uh, for ZipRecruiter and the Tennis Channel. But, you know, everything's been really slow here this past year because everybody's been on strike. The writers were on strike, and then they just finally got out of it. And now the actors are still on strike, and the actors have been on strike now for, oh gosh, I think three months, four months now. And yeah. it's probably not going to be over until the beginning of the year. So, you know, everything's going to ramp up again at the beginning of the year. But yeah, it's been a pretty slow year. So I've just been focusing on the sitcom and, and the band, really. Yeah, yeah. What's, be, what's been going happening with the band? 
Well, we just played a show a couple of weeks ago. We've had a couple of really fun shows. We just played a show with uh, Big D and the Kids Table and Mustard Plug and uh, old friends of ours. So that was really fun to see them again. And uh, But we're taking a break right now, and we're just focusing on writing new music. Ooh. So we're gonna, yeah, we're going to have some new songs coming out. Excellent news. I'm looking yeah. forward to hearing. Yeah. You, know, you know, we're still not sure exactly how we want to release it, because, you know, it seems like very unpopular now to release mm. a full-length album anymore. It's like everybody does singles, you know, and they release yeah. singles. Because everybody's attention span is so fucking short now, you know? It's like TikTok is so big. Um, yeah. I yeah, the whole world. I know I do too. I'm too old for that shit. But um, I, it, you know, it's just a whole new world for us because the last time we had done it, whole albums were still a thing. You know, mm-hmm. so we're just trying to navigate what's what's the best way to go about it. So, we'll are you planning any tours or anything? No, you know, things are way different for us now. We we can't really tour like we used to <clears throat> or leave for an extended period of time. You know, Megan and Tristan married each other. They have a kid now. Mm-hmm. You know, I mean, at, at some, some of us have, like, our basis is an exec at Warner Records. Like, people have careers and shit now, you know. It's, you it's, should use him. <laughs> oh, we do. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> you know, he, he works in a department that doesn't really... Helps very much. He has a lot of really good insight, but uh, again, you know, uh, major record labels aren't looking to sign ska bands. So weird. <laughs> <laughs> but, um, I don't know what it's like up there, but over here it seems um, ska's getting another where it's it's getting popular again. Is it, it is. the same of current? It is. Things are really changing around, and that's why, <clears throat> again, it's kind of like the perfect time for my sitcom. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, it's it's starting to ramp up, and there's like a whole new set of bands, a whole new set of fans that have come out and are really enjoying the music now. So it's it's a lot of fun. It's it's cool because you still got like all of the the people that kept growing up like we did, who still love it and come out to the shows, and then they started raising their kids on it, and then like teenagers are finding out about it, and um, it's really neat. Like the bad type records bands, I think. Are making a huge impact in the scene yeah. and, and bringing new fans in, and it's it's awesome. That's good, yeah. It's, it's been good to see over here. It's like you remember Random Hand. Yeah, they got a new album that came out. Yeah, and they it's were fantastic. Like, like, yeah, it's amazing. But like, like, uh, like you, they went on hiatus, mm-hmm. and they've come back, and they've come back just bigger. Yeah, and it, yeah. it's like it's crazy. Incredible. It's been an incredible thing to see, and there's uh, a lot of great bands over here, like Fetus Idea are doing great at Risky and the Really Cool, uh, Barstool Preachers, who were, I was trying to get you to go see those yes, guys. Yes, yes, I know, I was so bummed. It was, well, we were thinking, you had thought it was the next day, and then it turned out it was that night, and I already had plans that night, but it was if it was the next day, I probably could have gone. But it's funny, because a few of my, sh- uh, my friends ended up being at that show, and they told me all about it, and I was like, oh, shit! <laughs> but, yeah. But yeah, it just it just goes in circles, you know. Maybe yeah. we can play Scar again. Yeah, I was like, Mr. Shrabs needs to get on that that you know bandwagon. Well, you know, yeah, talk. anything to get some people to listen to us. You know what it's yeah, like. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> just follow so, uh, the trends. So, like, so you're writing new music. You're not going to be touring, but you're going to be doing lots of gigs. I would say lots. Um, <clears throat> we're trying to keep it to probably about like four or five gigs a year because it's just one it's hard four or five a year yeah i know Lizzie um, yanks. <laughs> <laughs> it's it's hard with our schedules you know they don't always all align um and some of our guys travel a lot for work mm. um but then also at the same time too we don't want to spread ourselves too thin you know like you oversaturate the market and nobody wants to come yeah yeah it's, you know, it's just kind of, especially because we can't travel an awful lot. Like, we are talking about, like, maybe being able to do, like, a weekend here or there, but we really have to pick, we're not going to buy a van again, you know? So we really have to pick places that are close enough that we can carpool and cars together. Yeah, yeah. You know? No, yeah, I totally, totally understand that. But I'm, I'm just glad you're back together because, you know, you you were missed, you guys. You guys were missed. Oh. And, I mean, uh, I, I, I still miss the days of, like, seeing you come on stage and saying, uh, I wear Chase Long Beach from Long Beach, California, which for some reason made me laugh my ass off every single time. I was like, where the fuck else are they going to be from? They got Chase Long Beach. <laughs> but, 
people will still ask me, they'll be like, oh, what's your band's name? And I go, oh, Chase Long Beach. And they go, oh, okay, where are you from? And I'm like, for real? Like, yeah, <laughs> Long Beach, what? Yeah, hey, Beach. <laughs> yeah. Uh, now, the listeners might not know, but um, back in the day, your, we'll, we'll say manager, was your brother. He's Keith our tour manager. Yeah. 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 yeah, yeah. Keith, Keith Kong. Yeah, is Keith he Kong. still about and helping you out? The no, muscle? no, 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 he's not. Um, he's actually, he's in the PhD program right now. So he's been really busy with that. Um, A PhD? So, yeah. <laughs> Dr. Keith Kong. Dr. Keith Kong. Holy That's shit. His official title. Um, yeah, so no, he's he's been very busy doing his own thing again. You know, everybody grew up and kept doing their own their own shit. But he has come to a couple of the shows, so that's good. Yeah, yeah, yeah. that is good to hear because he's a wonderful, wonderful man, mm. a wonderful beast of a man. <laughs> <laughs> but Karen, so we're, we're talking about your music career, what you've done with Chase Long Beach, all the amazing stuff you've done. You know, you toured. All America, you've toured the UK. Did you ever tour Europe? Yeah, yeah, we did do a full Europe tour uh, one time. It was our third tour, which we also came to the UK too. Um, a lot of our European gigs ended up getting canceled. So we spent a lot of time in this one Austrian village of Palau. Uh, I think we spent like five or six days in this village. It got to the extent <laughs> where the woman that we were staying with, her mom was like, you guys can't stay here anymore. <laughs> it was just too long and uh, it was such a small village that the mayor let us because it was in the middle of the summer let us sleep in the uh the elementary school's gym because they were out of school yeah we got permission from the mayor of this little town or village to uh <laughs> stay there and then <clears throat> the locals came up and uh we taught them how to play beer pong and dodgeball and they kicked our asses and fucked at them so Europeans from the on the yeah. mainland. Yeah, we yeah. were like, why did we do this? This was su such a bad idea. <laughs> you see, I think we're we're teaching people now who like might listen to this and be thinking about setting up a band that it's <laughs> there's a lot of crazy weird times that happen where you it's not all big buses, big sold out shows. A lot there's a lot of shit out there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You're gonna like sleep on people's kitchen floor, wake up with the flu, and then you have to keep playing for two weeks, even though you can't stand up. You know, it's super tight. Join a band. Do it. Yeah, I think. Well, I, I mean, I love being in a band, but I think it, you have to be a special sort of animal to stay in, to stay yeah, in it, sure, and sure. take all 100%. the knots and keep going. Because so many bands just drop off the wayside after like a year or two. So it's good to it's, see. That you're still here all these decades yeah. later. Yeah. And, and it's not for the faint of heart. Exactly. <laughs> yeah. So, questions. Here we go. Some some good questions. Your favorite band you've ever toured with? Mr. Shiraz, obviously. Of course, of course. Uh, but aside from us, because, you know, not seeing the heat all that. No, honestly, I, I think it would be you guys. Like, I mean, of course, it was fun playing with Real Big Fish, but. Um... I, I would say you guys. That was like one of the funnest tours I think we ever did. And the worst band you've ever toured with? Oh, Fandango. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but no, you know what? This is the thing is we didn't have a lot of bands that we actually did like full tours with because mm -hmm. usually we were the ones like headlining uh, the tour. It was like our own tour. So we didn't always have like another band that we went out with and it would mm -hmm. just be, you know, one off every night. Uh, but everybody we did tour with, the only bands we were toured with were uh, Real Big Fish, You Guys, Mustard Plug, Fandangle, and Sonic Boom 6. And everybody, we loved all of those bands. So I, I couldn't pick a, a least favorite. Well, let's not say to it because I, I want to goss. Who's the worst person in music you've ever met? Haley, Haley Williams from Haley. <laughs> <laughs> Mine's Doyle from the Misfits. I heard you tell a story about him because I've been listening to Gigs and Ghosts. And yeah, I was like, that sounds fucking terrible. What a, what a piece of shit. <laughs> yeah. The thing is, you have so many people coming into the parish all the time that you mm. get to meet all of these different musicians, even if you don't play with them. So you get like exposed to all of these people and their personalities. So, I mean, ninety-five yeah. percent of wonderful, wonderful people yeah. understand. 
We had Voodoo Glow Skulls here a few months ago, and it was so good to catch up with those guys again. Yeah, yeah. Like you, and that's a band who's been around for four million years. Most of them aren't like the original. None of the brothers are in the band anymore. It's like mm. a whole new band now. You know, it's like it's not even Voodoo anymore. It's so weird. Yeah, yeah. I mean, two of the brothers are still there. And the, Excuse me, I heard all of them had quit. No, no, no. Uh, gu- uh, bassist and guitarist still there. Ah. Okay, yeah. okay. They've got a different singer now. I think they've got the singer yeah. from uh, Death by Stereo. That's and what I've heard, he, yeah. He <laughs> is like, he is a wild card. He just bounces. Yeah. He's loving it. His area is looted on mass. But seeing them this summer was just fantastic. And the brothers, yeah. just, they, they just still love it. And like, not an ego in the world in that band, you know. Yeah. And that, yeah. that's good to see. You know? Like I was saying, that. It, you, I think, especially in like the punk and ska scene, you've got to really be there for the love. Yeah, one hundred percent. Because you're not there for the money. <laughs> what <laughs> is money? <laughs> but so, Kara, we've 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 been here. We've talked about your music past, your music present, yeah. your music future. Now, are you ready to get spooky? Oh my god, I'm so ready. So, Karen, it is time to talk about goals. <laughs> Do you see that production there? Yes, I love it. <laughs> so, I, I always, value. Thank you, thank you. That's uh, my <laughs> wonderful uh, producer, Callum. Callum, come say hello to Karen. Hello. Hi, Callum. Yeah, right, let's go. Uh, so, I always kick off this part with the one question. Karen Roberts, Chase Long Beach from Long Beach, California. Do you believe in ghosts? Absolutely. Oh my Fuck god. yeah, you do. Yeah. Oh my god. Yeah. I uh, yeah, I have the, experienced far too much not to. This is what we like to hear. Yeah. Do you know? Do you want to hear something really strange, which you yeah. might appreciate because uh, you know the guy, Tim Shiraz. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, massive believer in ghosts. Interesting. I could see that. I, I didn't think he that. would be. Like, when I first started doing this, I thought he'd be the one who was like, ah, ghost bullshit. Yeah. And he told me such amazing stories. Even the other day, he was telling me one about seeing a blind medium and what happened there. Like, I'm not going to go into it because he's got such interesting, scary stories that yeah. I'm making him a guest. He's going to come on because it's fantastic. It's oh, some I of the creepiest it. stories I've ever heard have come out of Tim's mouth. And because Tim is like, the sensible one. Yep. You know. And I, I know, he's uh, a dad but, now, like, yeah. He's got, a, he's got a ghost in his house. Shit. Yeah, he's oh, been whispering his right. missus. That's the thing. It's like, I feel like, especially in England, I, I can't understand how somebody in your country can't believe in ghosts. And you have such a long, rich history. And there's so many ghosts everywhere. Everywhere. I mean, Everywhere. So I'm like, how how can somebody not in America I can understand a little bit more because there's, you know, especially like here on the West Coast, like we were the last things to be developed, you know, like my city oldest buildings are like the early nineteen hundreds. Mm. You know what I mean? So there's just not as much opportunity for there to be spirits, but it's like in the UK stops it thousands of years of spirits roaming around. Like, how can you not believe it? Exactly, exactly. Um, like, um, why, I always want to know from every guest that we have, why do you think people have this such a fas- uh, fascination with all things spooky and all things ghostly? I think that people, well, the ones who believe in it, I think it's because, um, you know, it's so unknown. Like, people want to know more about things they can't explain, mm-hmm. you know? And when you can't, like, find like an exact like scientific reason or or an answer to something you just want to explore it so that you can't because humans are just very curious we want to be able to know the answer to everything and when we can't figure out an answer it just like consumes us yeah yeah um, it's like have you always been a believer is this something that triggered your belief or have you always had this interest i've always always had this um so I have a little bit the gift of the shine. If you, if you would. 
Mm-hmm. Um, and uh, it, it didn't really start picking up until this past decade, actually. Uh, so it wasn't for me, like, you know, growing up with it. The one thing I did have all of my life was I could always sense energy. Like when I go into a place, I can feel like, oh, this is not a good place. Like even as a kid, I remember being like, oh, this is not a good place. Or, oh, like I feel okay, you know, whatever. But my mom was somebody, my mom has seen an actual apparition. And uh, she raised us in like definitely, which is funny because I come from like a very Catholic family that does not believe in ghosts are not supposed to believe in those things. And, uh, but my mom has experienced too much where she always believed in it. She's actually a retired RN too, where she worked in a hospital where people died all the time. And there was always activity in the hospitals, of course. Um, so yeah, I just kind of always raised into it and I don't know if I should be saying this, but I'm going to, uh, whatever he can get mad at me. He's always mad at me anyway. Uh, but, but Keith actually has the gift. Uh, a lot Keith Kong, uh, you know the former <laughs> Keith. Kong. He he actually has the gift way more than I do. Where it started happening for him uh, around puberty, like I'm twelve, you know, eleven, twelve, thirteen. Keith saw puberty at four years old. Keith actually came out of the womb fully six four. Yeah, full hair. Yeah, as you know. yeah I mean, poor Eileen. Um, <laughs> <laughs> but. He, he, uh, he was like, I remember, you know, several nights of waking up to him screaming because he would have, you know, spirits coming in and, and visiting him. And unfortunately, you know, it was at a, he wasn't able to control like the, the negative spirits from coming in too. So he had some like really scary bad things visit him. And so my mom took him to see a medium and uh, the medium gave him the option. They said, do you want to try and hone the gift and use it or do you want to just shut it off? And, and he was so scared, you know, that he just wanted to shut it off. And so she taught him, you know, it's, it's basically like you imagine like a door closing on like the top of your head, mm-hmm. you know? And, and so he does have the ability to open that door and I've seen him do it. And he's, he's done it for me where he wanted to reach out to somebody in particular and communicate with them. And he was able to, but then what happens is because he hasn't honed it, eventually all of the spirits see, oh, there's an open door. So you only have so ever long, you know, whatever, 30 seconds, a minute, maybe with the one person that you're trying to communicate with before all these other spirits are like trying to push through the door all at the same time. And because uh, they want an opportunity to communicate, you know, that they don't get that opportunity to be able to communicate with a lot of people. So when they see that opening, they all try and jump through. And, uh, yeah, so he, he mostly has it shut off. That's um, fucking terrifying. <laughs> yeah, right? Yeah. Uh, for me, luckily, um, I think because it happened for me much later in life, and actually what had happened for me was that it really started to change after our old sax player, you know, you know Scott. I after do, Scott, yeah. Yeah, after Scott had passed away. So he and I had a really strong connection in life and so it continued in death and so he was the first person that I was actually able to communicate with and I still can um and so that's continued on but I want to say like in the last four-ish years it's expanded more where I've become I think more spiritual and like meditative and and been open to it Mm -hmm. and I think a lot of it had, had changed to like in the fact of when you stop getting scared, mm-hmm. you're allowed to, to open it up and, and welcome it in. And um, so now I've had few experiences. I'm still not at the point where, like, I would like to. It's going to take a lot more work uh, and, and time, unfortunately, which I don't always have. Mm-hmm. Uh, I, I would love to be able to be a medium and, like, give readings because I just think it's beautiful if you can help people get closure and comfort. Yeah peace from you know their loved ones who passed on um but i'm really just kind of at the point right now where if a spirit has something that they really need to say and i'm like with this person or not even with this person like i've had people come in who just needed to say something um then they will i, I think it's happened i think i've channeled like about 
seven or eight spirits now. So it's still like very much on like the very low end. And this has mostly been, I want to say the majority of it's been in like the last two years, year and yeah. a half. So it's it's been ramping up for sure. Mm-hmm. And I think just because I've been more connected with it. Yeah, so when you think about that as like, um, seeing you talking to Scott, you know, Scott was mm-hmm. a, a wonderful, wonderful dude. Sadly, he yeah. got ill. Um, yeah. past, and like that must be amazing that you've been able to contact him uh, but other people you've talked to has it, has it, have they all been like I don't, I don't want to say good or bad spirit but like have they all been like yeah let's say goodbye have they all been like yeah. good or has it been any like nah, I'm gonna get your face yeah, no no so, so none of it's been negative um, so this is really funny I I think a lot of it too came down to uh, it started happening when I became more open like watching shows and things out um mediums and and like listening to podcasts and stuff so like somebody i'm a really big fan of which is really funny is um the long island medium Teresa caputo yeah yeah Yeah. i do know exactly what that is beautiful blonde helmet yes yes (laughs) i just love her so much it's so funny because you know there are a lot of people out there that are fake unfortunately and praying on people it's terrible but I really do believe that she has a gift and, um, and she gives tips like on her podcast, like for other people who have it as well and like how to hone it. And, and, uh, her big thing is that you can, and, and I don't like believe in God necessarily, but, um, is that you only want to communicate with spirits that walk in God's white light. Right. And so that means that you're only allowing spirits in that are at a level of vibration that are going to be negative or harmful um, or destructive. And so I have the only one bad, so everyone's been like positive, you know, for the most part, but there was one spirit. So, um, which I have like ghost stories of this house too. So my, my now ex-boyfriend, um, his good friend uh, is still in the hospital. He's been in like a, an assisted living home now for a while. And he has a cat that we would go and take care of. And his house isn't haunted. It's not the house itself, but he's a collector of um, souls. Of, yeah. Of, of guns, especially, but of <laughs> like um, lots of memorabilia. Not like he goes shooting, but he, he does like props and stuff for theaters. So yeah. he collects all of these like guns and like old uniforms and costumes and things, but like authentic antiques of things that belonged to people so the spirits that are in his house are connected to these objects and not the house and so i spent a lot of time there you know taking care of his cat and it got to the point where i couldn't even sleep in his bedroom anymore because the last one night i was sleeping in there and uh i just woke up and i heard somebody say that man's voice say hello and i was like and I knew no one was in the house. Like, it was just in here. But it was somebody else talking to me. And I was like, oh, no. Okay. Go uh, sleep out on the couch. <laughs> and uh, and then I want to say about, like, a month or so later. Because it, it could obviously tell that I knew. Because I would talk to it. I was like, please just leave me alone. Like, I just want to go to sleep. You know, whatever. And my ex-boyfriend and, and the guy who owns the house, his friend, neither of them believe in it <laughs> at all. And, and I would always be like, no, there's like something going on. There's like this crazy energy. Like, okay, Karen. Yeah, whatever. And they were total non-believers. And, um, and then I was in the bed again, trying to sleep one morning and I could feel it in there. And I just had my eyes closed and I was like, I just want to go to sleep. And then all of a sudden I felt somebody sit down at the bottom of the bed and and I, I just I just asked, you know, I said, please, I'm just trying to sleep. Will you please leave me alone? And then they got up. Like they it decompressed and, and that comp- you know. Put their ghost trousers back on. Yeah. yeah. The belt, left the room. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh, which is, you know, actually really funny. So there were two spirits that I found over time in that house. And one of them, it's funny that you say that, he was just like this. I never actually saw apparition. It's just what um, what I feel and sense, and it's like everyone's different. Like I can't. It's kind of like this this picture that I get in my mind's eye of them, 
and uh, the, the first guy, he was, he was totally harmless. They both were totally harmless. The first guy was just kind of like fucking about, you know, like whatever, but he was like a little bit of a pervert. <laughs> um, he was like, imagine if you, you could picture like a guy who's like that drunk who's hanging out at a saloon back in like the old west. He's got like a long beard and like kind of like a beat up hat and tattered kind of, and he was probably like in his 50s. Mm hmm. And uh, which was old for that that time. Not you know? yeah. Yeah, and I, I still couldn't figure out what object it was specifically that he was attached to, but there was this room in the middle of his house that there was so much energy coming from that room, and it was like his costume room. I would always close the doors to both because there were two doors to it on either side. I would just make sure that that room was always closed up, and I tried to contain the energy in there as much as possible because it was just overwhelming. And so whatever he was connected to in that room somewhere. Um, but he had, he would come in and I would be like taking a shower. And I remember one day, like very specifically, I could feel him in there when I was about to climb in the shower. And I was like, you need to go. And, <laughs> and, and it was kind of like one of those things, you know, like you picture like something's kind of like, okay. And they're like walking off, but like turning their head back. Yeah. yeah. And, Making and the footsteps. Like, going down the you stairs. Need to go. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I was like, well, you need to actually go. It's like, fine but, you know he's like totally harmless he's just like a little bit of a pervert old man you know found um, some so ectoplasm on the floor afterwards <laughs> <laughs> yeah <laughs> um but the other spirit i do know specifically what he was attached to because i could feel his same energy when i touched the object um and he was the reason it turned out, you know, that object was actually in the bedroom. It was in the bedroom closet. And and that was why it was so heavy back there. And the energy usually didn't follow up to the front of the house because he was connected to that object. But one day he did come up to the front of the house. And that was when he actually, like, entered me. What? And so, like, he came inside of me. What? Um, <laughs> 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 so it's this very strange thing and scott has done it once before too um you can actually feel spirit enter your physical body and mm -hmm. and i take on i have my own emotions of course too like i'm still attached to myself it's not like i become that person but you take on all of the emotions of what they're feeling and and in this guy's case specifically too i could feel in my chest like this blow to my chest in this burning heat and it was like oh and but he just had this heaviness he was just so sad it was so sad that i just wept and i could just feel his sadness and it just brought me to tears and he he talked to me he was like about 21 he had it was it was world war one I, I i like i could see his uniform and it looked more world war one than it did too and um and he was so sad because he had this wife and like a new baby and he couldn't see them again and it was clear to me that he had that from what i had felt physically that he had been shot in the chest is what it felt like mm -hmm. and and then when i found the object it was it was a gun and it, it was a world war one gun the bayonet and everything like i said when i touched it it was the same energy it was in that closet in the back room and um it was his gun because it was one of those things too where i was like was it the gun that killed him and it was like no he he had this attachment to it it was his mm -hmm. and but it, it was just this overwhelming sadness and that was that was the most i want to say like negative experience i had which still wasn't negative because he was like a normal human who was just trapped and he was just so sad it was just it, and it was I just felt so sorry for him and I, I wish that he could, you know, be released, but I couldn't make that happen, you know, yeah. unfortunately. So Do you think there's a way that you can release him from these attachments so they can well pass over or do what do whatever, just be released for it? Yeah, I definitely do think there are. Um, but unfortunately again, like I don't know that ritual yet it's something that i would love to be able to learn that was like when my mom saw the spirit that she did she saw you know like i said a full-blown apparition this was back in the 1970s she was out sitting at a friend's house that was notoriously haunted everybody knew that it was haunted and uh so again it was the 70s they were like the beads the beaded doorway in the kitchen and she was just walking past the kitchen and she looked in and there was a man standing there full suit bowler hat it looked like she said like 
30s, 40s, like very well dressed, like a time when men always wore hats, but she could see through him. And, and she just ran out screaming from the house. And she still talks about it to this day where she says she wishes she could go back and talk to him and try and help him on, Mm -hmm. you know, and, and I definitely, I do believe that, you know, there are ways to help spirits move on, but unfortunately I don't, I don't know how to do that yet. Uh, You must learn. (laughs) I want to, I would love to, I'm definitely, I'm working on it. You know, again, it's just, it is a lot of, um, training. It's, it's not yeah. something, yeah, to be able to do all these different things. So. Yeah, I'm, yeah. Glad, you say, I'm glad you say about, like, the feeling you get in certain rooms, because we've had a, a few um, a guests on the podcast so far who talk about, like, uh, the feeling when you get, the like, the heaviness of a room and stuff like that. And, like, it's like, uh, it, and it is, it seems like everybody who has, we had, uh, we've got an episode out this week, which we recorded a few days ago, and then, um, Sasquatch Bob, who was on that, he's like, he doesn't know if he believes, but he's been in. Well, he said that, and then he told me some of the greatest ghost stories in the world, you know. And it was that thing about, you know. So by the end of the podcast, he he's a true believer, you know. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> but yeah, he's just saying, you know, um, the way you feel, the heaviness, the yeah. that, that that there is somebody right. Fucking that. <laughs> yeah. I mean, like, I have houses that I do like regular jobs. There's this house that I go to um, every other week. And, and I know there's always somebody, they won't talk to me though, but I know there's somebody always watching me. I'm not alone. And, and it's just this feeling that I have. And it, you know what? It, this is the thing. I even had this story happen. This was a couple of months ago. Um, it even happens with objects too for me where it's it's not even just a space itself so uh talina chikami uh, williams uh the lead singer of Bambi bambi her and i are best friends and it was it was her birthday and we went to this antique store and we were walking by these these glass cases of things and i stopped and sometimes there'll be this this moment where something really negative it can draw you in you know where it almost kind of hip- hypnotizes you in a sense. And so that had started happening. There was this object and I, I don't know enough about religion to know um, what God or goddess it is, but it's, it's one of the Hindu God, God or goddesses. And it was a little statuette of it. And, um, and I just, I, it started pulling me in and I was like, Oh, nope, no, 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 no. You know, like I had to like literally say this out loud to stop it. And I was like, Phew. There is some really, really bad energy to that. And Talina and her mom had already kind of started walking ahead of me a little bit. Talina runs back because she knows, you know, that I have, they have bought a new house and she had me come over and she's like, okay, is it haunted? Tell me if it's haunted. And I was like, do you really want to know? <laughs> it is. Um, but yeah, whatever. Uh, but so she was like, what is it? What is it? And she runs back over and she goes, tell me which one is it? And I, I point at it and I go, there is something really, really bad with that statue and she's like that one and we're looking at it and then it starts moving oh fuck that (laughs) and nothing else on the shelf is moving there's like thousands of other pieces nothing else is moving it starts rocking back and forth and we both fucking look at each other (laughs) bolt. we were like no thank you (laughs) just run and she and she was like and so i think it was nice too because it kind of reiterated to her like oh karen's not making this shit up like she like really feels this Mm-hmm. Um, but yeah, so it's like it can even happen with objects. Um, I know I'm like I've, I've got so many stories. Like I've got like a really good, I've got a couple of really good Scott ones that are like really positive ones. But I'm yeah. like I don't want to keep you forever. But I'm like no, I'm no, no. You tell stories. tell away, tell away. This is this is why we're here. Uh, okay. Um. So a couple days after Scott had actually passed, uh, it was it was right in between Christmas and New Year's when he died, and my mom oh god i hope she never listens to this uh, my mom <laughs> smokes a lot of weed uh she's retired she can do whatever the hell she wants it's legal in california fuck it anyway she smokes a lot of weed and she had my brother's really terrible about giving her christmas list right so he's a grown-ass man and she buys him a remote control helicopter but she accidentally was too stoned and bought two of them and <laughs> So she she gave one to my brother for Christmas, and then she kept one herself in the closet. 
And so he had gotten it a few days before. And for those several days before, we had all been trying to play with this thing and land it. And it is like so touchy. You cannot get this thing to land properly to save your fucking life. Like it crashes, like it, it, it it's just like full blown hitting the ground, flipped upside down. Like it's terrible, right? So my friend is over at the house. We're sitting on the back patio and uh, she had found out that Scott had died a little bit later. So she wanted to get, you know, the full gist of what happened. And so I'm telling her the whole story. I'm getting emotional, obviously. And my brother's out there just being a douche playing helicopter. <laughs> and we're like, dude, come on, dude. Can you please, like, stop? Like, obviously, like, we're, we're having a conversation right now. He's like, I don't care, you, whatever. And then he ends up getting it trapped on top of the corrugated roof that we're sitting underneath. So it's super <laughs> fucking loud. It's on its side. And it's spinning. Going like, whoop, 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 whoop. And we're like, oh, my God, dude, stop. And so it's stuck. He just gives up. He puts the control dab on the table that we're sitting at. And he goes inside the house. And I'm still just telling her the story, getting emotional. Then all of a sudden, hear it go again, you know, hitting the corrugated roof. And I was like, Keith, fuck, dude. You know, but the controller's still sitting here. But in my mind, I'm thinking like, oh, he went and got the other one for my bonds. You know, maybe it's still somehow connected to this other mm -hmm. one, you know. I even thought at one point that maybe he got on the roof and he had like loosened it up, you know, and, and then, so all of a sudden it does that for a couple of seconds and then it picks itself up and it flies off the roof and then it does the most graceful landing onto the ground where it actually fucking lands the way it's supposed to, like the way a helicopter <laughs> should in real life. Yeah. Yeah. Stop crashing and burning. And, um, and I'm screaming, and I go, Keith! Both my friend and I saw this happen, and we're like, what the fuck? And I was just like, dude, Keith! And he's like, what? And he comes out, and he's eating something. And I was just like, did you, did you do, did you bring on the roof? And he's like, no, dog, I'm in the kitchen. I was like, what? And then I'm like, and the controller's there, and I go into my mom's room, and I'm like, was the, her, her controller, her helicopter, or locked away in her closet, still hasn't been opened. And I tell my mom what just happened, and my mom starts crying. And she goes, I had a dream last night. She's like, I didn't want to tell you because I thought it was going to upset you. She goes, I had a dream last night that Scott was flying, and he could see everything. And he was just so happy because he could see everything all at once. And then I, you know, I'm like, oh, my God, what the fuck just happened, right? So then fast forward, like three weeks later, I'm at his celebration of life. And I'm telling his brother this story. And his brother goes, oh, my God, I just got goosebumps. And I was like, I know, right? It's so fucking crazy. And he goes, no, you know about the helicopter ride, right? And I was like, no, what are you talking about? And he goes, Scott and our cousin had a helicopter ride scheduled because Scott always wanted to ride in a helicopter. But he was too sick and they had to cancel the ride. And he goes, you gave Scott his helicopter ride. Oh. <laughs> and I was like, oh, my God. <laughs> like, crazy. Like, just see a fucking helicopter pick itself up and propel itself down and land itself. Yeah. The fuck? <laughs> you know? Oh, man. Holy shit, you see. Ghosts yeah. are real, Calvin. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> But then the other real good Scott story, this one's much shorter, when the band got back together and we were deciding, you know, are we going to do this or not, uh, on, on April Fool's Day last year, because we thought that was perfect timing, mm -hmm. uh, we were all having this meeting in Megan and Tristan's house, and I just remember we were all standing in a circle, because Joe was like, I need to leave, like, we need to have this conversation or not. And so we're all standing in a circle talking about it and we had like come to the conclusion like yeah let's do this this has been a lot of fun like I miss all you guys like let's get back together and then all of a sudden this is the one time that scott has actually entered me and it was so intense i'm like, standing in the circle with the rest of the band and he just comes in through the top of my head and i was just like <gasps> you know because it's like you do like you almost take like this extra breath because you're taking like a breath for like another person mm -hmm. and and it was just like, and it brought me to tears, like happy tears, because it was just, 
he was so excited and he just wanted to be a part of it so badly mm-hmm. that he had to like feel what it felt and then he was gone. He like it was like he just came through the top and went back out the bottom. And then later that night he came to me again and he was just like, You have to do it. You have to do it. And I was like, I am doing it, chill. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, but yeah, like it was so sweet because he was so so excited. He just wanted to be a part of it. It was it was the best. It was so great. <laughs> so he's still in the band. That's good to hear. He's still in the band. He's still with <laughs> us for sure. That's good news. That's good yeah. news. This is good. This is good. You're giving me some great stories here. This, yeah. this, is, what, this is what this podcast is all about. This is what I yeah, want. I, I know. I don't have. I, I, I do have some spooky-ish ones too. Like I was like, I don't have like a lot of since I'm like more like on the spiritual level. Mm. It's it's more like, oh, that's sweet, or you're helping someone. I, I do have a couple of spooky ones I'll tell you too. So Ronnie, you know, my best friend, her family owns a bunch of property at Goldfield, Nevada, which is a ghost town. Mm-hmm. It is the coolest place. Uh, so I took a trip out there with her and her mom uh, back in 2019. And we had some crazy experiences. So the whole <laughs> town caught, it was like a, a bustling old town that's why it's obviously called goldfield and and it was like booming it was it was much bigger it was the biggest city in nevada at the time and it was like start of the 1900s and then there was a huge fire that destroyed almost all of the town killed so many people and uh, and then there were you know all of the people who died in the mines too so there's just like all kinds of spirits roaming around too but then there were also Lots of like illegal card games and gambling and things that were happening where people would kill each other over card games. And there was like notorious, it was like a huge prostitution ring where the Goldfield Hotel, which Ronnie was literally telling me last night that this owner who buys out hotels and redoes them in the area refuses to buy the Goldfield Hotel because she thinks it's a portal to hell. And Goldfield Hotel actually has all of these underground tunnels where the men would have their dinner with their wives. The wives would go off to like the parlor room to do whatever with the other wives. And then the men would say, oh, we're going to, you know, the cigar room or whatever. But they would all take these underground tunnels and either go to these card games or meet up with prostitutes. Mm-hmm. So there were all kinds of things happening. Prostitutes getting murdered all the time. You know, yeah, people getting drunk or angry over card games, you know, whatever. <laughs> all kinds of people dying in this town all the time. So, uh, we stay at the Tonopah Hotel, which is one of the most haunted hotels in America, has been voted one of the most haunted hotels year and year again. And it was in October. So they were also doing like Halloween tours too. We took like a, like a spooky ghost tour of the hotel. So cool. Um, but the floor we were staying on was notorious for these two children spirits running around and playing pranks on people (laughs) and so we had gone out to dinner and i had come back brought my leftovers left it all on like the table underneath tv and then we went out i think to the ghost tour actually and then i came back after and the napkins that were with my leftovers that were on the table were now on the bed and i was like I didn't put those there (laughs) in the room. And I was like, so, you know, it's not like I like accidentally. And then, so Bonnie and I would go to the park, across the street. We're gone again. I come back and my lighter that was in the bathroom had been moved. So it was like these little things kept getting moved and it was Mm -hmm. like these little, little pranks and things were getting played. Right. So the kids, the kids were having their fun. So I think it was the next day we were standing outside of the, um, the firehouse and it went along like a highway, but there's a building coming down the highway. It's again, it's this ghost town. Hardly anybody ever takes this highway anymore. And all of a sudden, Bonnie and I heard like, almost like it's from far away, like in, in another distance, but it's not like far away down the street. It's like almost like a different dimension. Mm-hmm. 
here, like an old school, I know you guys just call them klaxons still, but for us, a klaxon horn is a very specific sound. Uh, like the very first cars had the honk honk, you know. <laughs> Sorry, klaxon. I want honk honk, <laughs> like a ghost, <laughs> you know. One more, one more time. <laughs> For the audience, Hong Kong. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So uh, a Hong Kong. Um, yeah, Hong Kong. <laughs> no, but it had you know like a, a an authentic yeah. like klaxon horn. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Both looked at each other, and we were like, "What the fuck? Did you hear that?" And we're like, yeah. And so there is this really like original Ford that um, the convenience store owner owns a couple blocks away. And so we were like, okay, well maybe it was just them in their car and yeah. run, run over to it. Car's up there. The shop is closed. And we were both like, what the fuck? And so it was <laughs> like somebody traveling down highway like there's traffic when no one's coming, honking their horn back at like the turn of the century when Goldfield was this bustling town. Mm-hmm. And we were like, oh my gosh. Okay, so here's the real kicker of a story. There is this graveyard. Creepiest fucking graveyard. And it's at the top of a hill. And you go up, there's only one way in and one way out. You go up the hill, and when you're at the top, you can see the way back down. So you can see everyone coming and going. And when we get up there, we're the only people up there. There's no other cars. And there's this man that we pass by. And honestly, no joke, he looks a lot like um, what David Letterman looks like now. You know, with like the beard. Big beard. Big, big white beard. And he was just wearing like jeans like work jeans and and like a plaid button-up shirt and we drive right past him and he waves at us and smiles and we like oh hi we wave and we smile back at him you know and it was probably about 30 seconds later we pull the car over we park and get out and we turn around we don't see him and there, there's no other car and if he had walked, which would be crazy because it's really pretty far outside of town, but, you know, sure, he could walk if he wanted to. We would have seen him walking back down the hill because it was 30 seconds later. And he's, like, at the back of the cemetery. So it would have taken him a while to even get to that point. And he was just gone. He was gone. He never existed. And all three of us saw him. And we were like, holy shit just disappeared yeah yeah holy honk honk <laughs> <laughs> yeah waving ghosts knocking ghosts yeah. he was so friendly that's, that's, good. Not- that's good yeah like, like old man casper yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh god oh god i want to hear more karen i want to hear more what else i know got? i know i I've got, you know, I've got other channeling, you know, stories. Um, I, my mom's friend came to me. She was talking about a friend of hers who had passed uh, last December. And she was telling me a story about his ex-wife and how nasty she was to him. And um, and then all of a sudden, I was, I was just sitting in her living room with her. And I met this man once, but I was like a baby. And I don't remember him. And, um, and... My mom, I guess, basically, the, his ex-wife was trying to get him to get a promotion that he didn't want, but he would do anything that, you know, she wanted him to do. And uh, and my mom was just kind of standing up for him, and she was like, you know, I don't know if he really wants to do that. And this was decades ago. Mm-hmm. And his, his wife got so mad that she kicked my mom out of the house. She was like, you need to get the fuck out now. Don't ever come back, blah, 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 blah. And my mom left. And didn't see her or him again for years. I don't think she ever saw her again, but she didn't see him again until they got divorced eventually, like yeah. 10 years later or something. And and my mom was just like, I just felt so bad for him because he was like, so alone at the end of his life. Blah, and she was just so sad about it. And then all of a sudden, I was sitting there and again, somebody enters me and it was very clearly him. And uh, And he just says to me, he says, Tell her I said thank you for standing up for me. And that was it. That was all I wanted to say. 
And I told her that, and my mom was like, that's really nice. That's really nice to hear. You know? <laughs> yeah. My mom totally believes in it. Like, she knows I'm not making this up, you know? Yeah, yeah. Um, recently, uh, another musician friend of mine has been going through some hard times. Um, this man came through to me, and I'm pretty sure it's his dad who passed away about a year ago. And, and it was so hard because, like, he and I we don't have like a really close relationship. Like we, we've known each other for a long time, but we're not like really good friends where I'd be like, Hey dude, your dead dad came to me. Um, <laughs> <laughs> and I kind of, I fought back and forth where I was like, he, his dad like really wanted me to tell him this. And it, it was so strange, you know? And, and I just, I was like, I, for days I was asking my other friends, I was like, do you think it's okay? Like, should I tell him? And it, it Ate on me so hard that I knew I had to. So it finally took me about like five or six days to reach out to him. And his dad, it was so strange. He he just came into me and he goes, him about the shoes. He was so excited about these shoes for some reason. He was like, ask him about the shoes. Ask him about the shoes. I was like, what the fuck? And uh, and again, he's he's going through a hard time. He's facing an illness himself right now. And, uh, and, and then he, he just goes, tell him it's all going to be okay. Mm. And then he ends it again and he goes, but ask him about the shoes. <laughs> I was like, what is with these fucking shoes, you know? And so, and that was it. It was probably about 30 seconds and then he was gone. And, uh, and so I finally reach out to him and I tell him this and, and he was so sweet about it. And, uh, he's very spiritual too. So he totally like respected it. And he was like, I don't know what he's talking about with the shoes, but I'll, he said, I'll put it in my daily consciousness. This is, this is how spiritual he is. I was like, oh my God, like you're, you're amazing. That's, that's great. But he, um, but I kind of like when that happens too, because a lot of times what'll happen is you might not know what they're saying right now, but it could be like a couple months down the line and you find like this pair of shoes and there's like a note in the shoes or, or you find like an old pair of his shoes or something, you know, something that yeah. like triggers something where later it'll come back. So I'm still waiting for that moment. Cause I still think it's going to happen. Like I do feel like it's going to happen for him. And then it'll be like this. Aha. Moment. I found one of my dad's poops in my shoe. <laughs> hey, he left a surprise behind. <laughs> uh, but yeah, I mean, just like little things like that where I've had, you know, and like I said, I mean, most of the communication I've had is, has been with Scott and, uh, and it's just like, I just know when he's here and like, I can hear him, you know, it's also one of those things too, where you kind of, you, I don't know how crazy I sound, but you know what? The thing is, is I'm not doing it for you. You know, like if, if you think I'm crazy, that's fucking fine. I don't care. I know what I know and I know mm -hmm. what I feel. Um, but you know, like, but you hear like, oh yeah, this is voices talking to me it's like yeah you do sound like a fucking crazy person but it's not i know my voice in my head and i know when i hear somebody else's voice yeah and and you can actually hear their actual voice you know i understand this completely it's like um, yeah. you know like uh sometimes i think people can contact you through dreams like yeah, yeah. a friend of, a friend of, a friend of mine a friend of mine passed away a few years ago, sadly took his own life. But I've had like dreams and stuff where like he's been in there and normally in a dream people are talking but you don't get anything but when it's yeah. his voice, like his exact voice, yes. and you wake up and you can you know that voice and Yes. Yeah, one hundred percent. Like that's them. Another way too that people um communicate through dreams too, even if they don't say anything. You know it's a visitation if they are themselves, like, in their best way. They look totally healthy. Like, especially if they were somebody who was ill or, like, up well at the end of their life. Yeah. They look in their best form, and uh, and they're, like, happy and doing well. Like, that's a visitation. That's not just, like, a dream. Like, it happens yeah. all the time, and people will just write it off, you know? But it's, it's a thing. It's a real thing. Yeah, 100%. 100%. Yeah. 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 Oh, that's beautiful. <laughs> yeah. um, it's been so good to have you on here, Karen. I it's know, like, you know, no, it's like, you know, we've had a lot of guests and like, like, it's been good to catch you because it's been a little while. It's been a minute. I think the last time I saw you was when we did that uh, online quiz during lockdown. Oh my 
God. Man, that was there's all, ago. all the fun school boys and everything. Yeah, that was so much fun. That was yeah, so yeah. long ago. But I, I am about to buy a new apartment to live in, and uh, when oh, I go to look, when I go to look at a, a place, I always ask two questions: What's the spider situation? Is it haunted? I don't know if we can do this, Karen, but I'm going to go look at it again. I'm going to get you on a video chat. You tell me. You tell okay. me if this place sure. <laughs> has, got some, has got some bad juju. <laughs> it'll be my first time doing it from afar. I don't know how well it'll work without being there in person. I believe in you. <laughs> yeah, it's worth a try. Let's do it. It's a shining. It's a shining. Because yes. <laughs> <laughs> I've, I've got a place for a bargain, so there's got to be something wrong with it, right? Oh, yeah, there's got to be something wrong with it, for sure. It's an old, com it's an old converted mill, and like mills in in fucking England. Don't oh, do that, yeah. face. <laughs> I know. I mean, a lot of people die in mills. I'm just saying. I know. <laughs> <laughs> oh fuck! Oh fuck! <laughs> I'm coming over there. I'm coming over there. Okay. Right. Well, yeah. <laughs> Once again, thank you for being on Gigs and Gus. I've wanted to get you on here for a, a long time, and like, man, if you've got any more stories, we'll we'll do a part two with Karen. I mean. I'm sure, wait until next season. I'll have some more stories for you then, I'm sure. I bet you fucking will. Yeah. <laughs> but yeah, I, I'm so glad Cheers Long Beach is doing good. Um, I hope you your, your, sit, your sitcom gets picked up and shit. If there's a oh, part for if there's a part for a dashing English gent, you know, I'll hop on a plane and get over there. Well, the best part is I'm a writer, so I can write one in, so. Fuck yeah, fuck yeah. <laughs> yeah, a, a not tall Englishman with yeah. ginger... Oh, you got it. Well, that's the nice thing. We can always cheat your height. It doesn't matter. It's TV. This is true. <laughs> TV! <laughs> <laughs> but, well, I hope the rest of your day goes fucking great. You're going to work. I hope you serve a lot Thank of German you. beers. Don't drop anything. Um, <laughs> Knock on wood, yeah. Uh, keep getting entered by ghosts. <laughs> <laughs> I will. I'll let them keep coming inside me. Ah, <laughs> yeah, you're like <laughs> Eastern <of> California. <laughs> but yeah, uh, once again, this has been Gigs and Girls, season three, episode three. Karen from Chase Long Beach. Check out Chase Long Beach. You will not be disappointed. Check out everything she does because she's an all around good motherfucker. Fuck Hayley Williams. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but Karen, before we go, I need you to do one thing for me. Do I get a I want you to do. I want you to do the uh, Chase Long Beach introduction. Oh, God. God, okay. Hey, everyone, we're Chase Long Beach from Long Beach, California. Yeah, you fucking <laughs> are. <laughs> <laughs> but thank you again. Hopefully, I'll get out to see you soon, or you come over here and visit. Yes, um, yes. We'll party, we'll play some drinking games. Yes, let's do it. I'll I won't talk about ghosts. <laughs> right, anything you want to say before you shoot off? Uh, just keep believing in ghosts. Damn straight, people. That's the message we all need. That's the message we all want. We'll be back next time with season three, episode four. Might be Brian Clem. Might be Tim Patterson. Who knows? Who knows? Who can choose? It, 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 well, it depends who can be asked to come on, to be honest. <laughs> But thank you again. We'll see you all next time. Love you, Karen. Love you. Bye.